Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Mage. This is episode 14 of my Practical Logic series, and in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about rails. So this is the basic rail, and it is the backbone of the rail docking system, and this block is used for docking and allowing moving parts on ships. It has most of the same features as the old style dock, but many, many more, and most notably is the addition of the rail docker. This block docks one ship to another, or a ship to a station, and you can see it has an arrow indicating which way it will dock, so you can choose the orientation of your docks. And as you can see, the basic rail has an arrow as well, and the rotator and a rail turret axis has arrows indicating which direction they will dock as well, uh, but we will not be covering those two blocks in this video. Now, all rails are controlled the same, and can accept inputs from any logic gate or button or activator. So what essentially what happens is a activator logic gate will copy a rail that is next to them onto whichever rails you select. So when I set this activator high, it'll copy this rail to that set and that little trolley will move. And they also don't care if a high signal is remaining, it will just automatically copy the next order. So if I take this button and set it high, it'll copy this rail into those rails. And you can see it moves back across. And this works for ORs and delays just fine. And you should note that there's a bug regarding the knot and the T flip-flop. So, the knot and the T flip-flop do not behave as you would expect them to behave. Right now, this is high, so you would expect it to do nothing, and it is connected to those rails, so you would expect it to do nothing, because it goes low. But when I set this activator high, you'll see that it moves. And then when I set the, the knot high, nothing happens. So, activator high, knot high, nothing happens. So... What I think is happening is the the switch is made on the input side, not the output side. So when it receives a high signal from this activator, it sets the rail and doesn't actually look at the output of the knot. And this is true for the T flip-flop as well. So when I set this T flip-flop high using this button, you see that the rail moves. And that is actually what you would expect it to do. Now let's move it back. Now, if I hit it again, this T flip-flop would go low, so you would expect it to not move, but it moves. And there's interesting behavior if you actually combine these two bugs. So I select the T flip-flop here and put down a knot, and let's just set it proper, and then select that knot and connect it up to these rails. Now this, despite them being wonky, will actually control this rail properly. Um, well, not properly properly, it's actually inverted. So what I suspect is happening is the first signal goes in here, so this goes high, which sets this high, and when the T flip-flop receives a signal, it wants to copy this rail, so it sets it that way. Now this high signal then passes into the knot, which sets it low, but the knot doesn't care. The knot, as soon as it gets a high signal, it wants to set the rails. So the knot sets the rails. So you can see this knot will take this uh, rail and copy it into these rails. So you would expect this to go high and move the rails away from me, but it does the opposite. And then it's the same thing for the reverse. So I send a high signal here which turns this low, which then sends its low signal to the knot. The knot doesn't care if it gets a low signal, it will not change the rails, but... <laughs> push me out of the way. This T flip-flop here receiving the high signal will swap the rails so it moves away. Uh, you just gotta keep that in mind when working with T flip-flops and knots controlling rails directly, that if that bug ever gets fixed, they may break and all of a sudden your movement is reversed. Um, so that's just something you got to be aware of. 
Now next up, uh, you can actually get signals out of Rails anytime a rail is docked, a rail docker is docked to a basic rail. You can get a signal out using buttons or activators, and the buttons of course will flash, and the activator will stay on as long as the entity is docked, and of course this one is flashing because it is just passing over. But if I stop it at the end here, you can see the button pulsed, but the rail is keeping... Um, this entity is docked to that rail, which keeps this activator on until the entity leaves or is undocked. And the same is true for the rail dockers. So we have the button on top, which will flash when it docks, and this activator will be on as long as the entity is docked. So we can hop in, and as soon as we undock, you'll notice that activator turned off. And if we zoom out and redock, you can see that that button pulses when I dock. Now you can do some interesting things with rails. You don't you're you're not stuck to a 2D plane. You can actually move up and down and go from rail to rail as long as you can actually make contact with the side of the docker. So you see that moves up and over and then down and then transfers to that rail and over and around and whatnot. And I don't know why I have so many of these things, but whatever. And you're not you're not limited to just one plane. You can actually move around um, as long as the ship is not interfering with the sides of the rail docker. And unfortunately, you're still stuck to one entity. You can't transfer across different rails on different entities. And the last bit of control for rails I have to show is the undock feature. So to undock, you just need to take any logic input into the rail with no rail next to that input. So as soon as I push this button, you'll see that that it gets undocked and there is no indicator. And now there is the indicator saying that that has been undocked. And we just want to get away before I get stuck back down there with um, magnetic docking. Now to dock these, you can use the docking beam or you can use magnetic docking, but the magnetic docking is a little futzy uh, this is not a problem because it is uh, fully exposed, but if I were to build a floor around this module, it would become increasingly more difficult to dock using magnetic docking or contact docking. And the last bit of control for the rails would be speed, and you can take your rail speed uh, controller, rail speed controller, and connect it to any rails you want to control the speed of. And the default speed is actually 50%. And you can get 100% speed by just putting on a single activator next to that, uh, connected to the rail speed controller. It doesn't need to be next to it, it can be anywhere. And that gives you 100% speed. And the max speed is determined by a ratio of high to low activators. So if we add another, oh, that's a button. We add another activator, we get the 50% speed. A third one will give us 33% speed. A fourth one will give us 25% speed. And of course, we can go back up to 50 by turning one that on. And you can fine tune it. Uh, you can have 100 activators and do it in increments of 1% uh, if you want. The sky's the limit on that. And then recently we got the fleet update 1959 and this update added a couple new rails and the pickup rails act exactly like basic rails but are invisible when not in build mode and they also have no collision. So you can do some cool stuff like this. <laughs> so that rail is now floating along there, rail docker is now floating along. And you can see that it did trigger this uh, button when it passed it, and then this will set, reset the start. So let's hop into the core and show off this little track I got here. So what happens is I hit the button and the rail moves, and the core clips into that and doesn't care. I got the top, the sides, the bottom. I go down onto that rail and right through the pickup rail and around, and uh, there was a bit of lag there, and it moves along no problem. And you can even put 
have the the rail moving from either the side or above and put like a detector rail into the floor and as long as that rail's not trying to move the the docked entity anywhere else you can send a logic pulse without having to worry about having buttons or anything just kind of floating next to your uh, your pickup rails but now you can see I put this here so the rail will pass over get to this point and it'll try to move so this will actually stop it from moving and I sh you can also replace these with the pickup rails and it wouldn't care so as as long as the uh, the rails movement is valid it, it will it will move and yeah, we can actually fix that I guess I could uh, do to fix that and now it's back at the start so this opens up a whole world of possibilities for fleet carrier designs and you don't need to worry about having the rails embedded in the floor you can hover them above your floor upside down or you can have them to the si either side and you can still put your the docks you want your ships to dock to in the floor which is how I have my carrier set up I actually did a preliminary test to figure this method out and it works it works really well so um, the rails can also be changed between other rails so this is a rail basic and if I push the button it's now turned into a pickup rail a shootout rail which is this one here and the shootout rails behave exactly like pickup rails as well except they are faster and when you reach the end of the rail it launches you off and then of course you can also change that to rotators which I'm not going over in this video and then back to a basic rail the only thing you cannot turn it to is a rail turret axis now the last block added in this update is the pickup area which solves a lot of problems with magnetic docking so with magnetic docking you could not dock if you had anything built up around your uh, your docker uh, well you could but it was very difficult with the pickup area you get a little indicator when the rail is selected to see them and I, you don't need to actually have it selected to dock you just have to enter the area and it'll dock and it's like three meters or something I don't know the exact range but it's it's a fairly good range and then one cool thing about this too is it can actually be turned on and off so the, if we t toggle this activator that pickup block is now turned off and I'm not docking to it of course I can still magnetic dock if I want but I don't but if I turn it back on and boop, dock so that's just C on the activator and V on the pickup area I can um, go in here and you can see that pickup area there and uh, yeah lastly I'll just show off the how the the launch rail works so of course you you cannot manually dock to the pickup rails or the launch rails you can only manually dock to the basic rails so the docking beam and magnetic docking does not work so to dock to a pickup rail or a um, shootout rail you either need to have a basic rail going into it or the pickup uh, I can still having trouble keeping these names straight so it's the um, the pickup point and if we dock to this here you can see it just shot me out at much higher speed than the regular rails are capable of doing so kind of to prevent abuse even if I were to put a rail at the end here it would still launch me I don't think you can transfer from pickup rails to any other rail I think as soon as it leaves the pickup rail it is launched so that will be about it covering rails and all the nice new rail features that we got in the latest update I uh, hope you enjoyed I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next video